Hello! Today I'd like to show you some possible ways of creating your SigmaFP footage shot in CinemaD in Giro. I will also cover how to do it both in paid studio and free version. Ok, let's start then. I've prepared for you this file shot with ISO 100. It's pretty dark, cause it was underexposed for some reason, but still we can do a lot with this file because it's been shot on SigmaFP. I can easily raise the exposure up to 3.66 with almost no issues and noise in shadows. The next thing we have to do is to change the input color space uh, into Blackmagic uh, Design Generation 1 and Gamma into Blackmagic Design Film. I will name the first node as a noise reduction node and add two other nodes. The second node will be our adjustment node and the third one will be a color space transform node, in which I will use a built-in DaVinci Resolve OpenFX plugin called same as our node, color space transform. Later I will tell you how to use a LUT instead of this plugin. Now, this plugin transforms a Blackmagic Design color space and gamma into Rec. 709. Let's set an output color space and gamma to Rec. 709 and in input color space I choose Black Magic Design Generation 1 and in input gamma Black Magic Design Film. So you can see the image gets its contrast and saturation. But what we see here is that highlights are clipped. We can correct it by setting the tone mapping parameter to a luminance mapping. And it gives us a nicer flatter highlights by compressing it a little bit. Now now we need to adjust the white balance. For the sake of this tutorial I will use uh, a simple tool that can make it very fast. I take this small picker here and click on the eye, assuming that it should be white. Well, now it looks much better. It's time for a small secret. I will add a very useful tool called False Colors. Basically it is a LUT that I've created for you. These and other LUTs which I use in this tutorial you can find on the link in the description below. It will cost you just 2 bucks. Please don't judge, I spent some time doing these LUTs and tutorial. And I will spend all the money to make my channel better for you. Also, I'm sure you can find free similar LUTs in other places online. By adding this LUT we switch on a Predator Vision. Some of you might already know this tool. Actually, what this LUT does is converting 17 stops of grey into these colors. It helps you to see the exposure of every part of your frame, so blacks become magenta and whites become red. I usually try to have my skin tone somewhere here, in this zone, from the light grey through greens and pinks to a slightly lighter grey. Let's look at our image again. Now we can adjust the exposure while controlling the brightness of the skin. Let's switch to the adjustment node. I raise my highlights by holding an Alt key to affect only the white channel. I do it until I start seeing light grey zones on the face, like this. Let's turn the false color slot off. Now the image looks more pleasing in terms of the brightness levels. It's almost done, you can use it like this. But I think it is just a good start for creating a look. I would add to another nodes. This one will be a look lot. And another one will be an adjustment node. By the way, you can create a look by working with curves yourself. But I've made some look LUTs for you. Let's try the first one. It's called AZ Teal and Orange. It makes our shot look a little bit greenish. We can correct it by going to the hue versus hue curves and make our cyans a bit colder. I like the skin tones, but I would desaturate it a little bit and the hue versus saturation curves. Maybe I also desaturate greens. Coming back to the hue versus hue tab and move greens towards blue a little bit, making them colder. Mind that every LUT is just a starting point for your look. It never works like applying LUT and getting a super Hollywood look. You always have to make little adjustments. Each shot is unique, like this one. It has a lot of contrasty things on the background, boring white, colorless snow. 
but here this slot works good and maybe it wouldn't work for your footage. So let's reset the adjustment node and try this teal and orange LUT. Let's check first the skin exposure, it's ok. This LUT also looks good to me. Raising contrast a bit, you can make it a little bit colder. This is another teal and orange LUT that you can use for your project. Like this, already good. But let's try another thing. I switch to the vector scope and try to compress colors even more. I will go to hue versus hue curves and add another node. I will shift my green toward blues, shift my skin tones a little bit towards red. I will try to compress blues even more. Maybe I need to desaturate green colors. Continue working with the skin tones. Ok, fine. I like what we've got here. Let's try another one. A reset adjustment node. I will apply a TO new LUT. This LUT is already doing what I've tried to do with the previous one. It compresses blues. Maybe we can correct skin tones a bit. And let's check the exposure. I guess I need to bring the highlights a bit down. Right, like this. Uh, that was TO new LUT. And let's try another one. Uh, resetting this node. This is a winter forest LUT. It's a great look already. I would correct skin tones a bit by bringing them to the skin tones line in Vectorscope. Doing some changes in the colors, hue versus hue. Yeah, this one looks perfect for me. Let's check the noise. Actually, there is not much noise, special thanks to this amazing camera. But we can clean what we have with the built-in noise reduction tool. We switch to the first node, usually I set frames to 1 or 2. This shot is almost still and that's why I set the motion range to small. I always unlock Luma from Chroma and for this small amount of noise I set Luma to 1 and Chroma to 20. Same for spatial noise. Checking. My computer goes crazy. Good. We have almost no noise here. Ok. Let's see how we can do the same grading in a free DaVinci version, not Studio One. Instead of Color Transform plugin, you can always use a Transform LUT. We need to create two new nodes. Turn the plugin node off. The first node should be a saturation node. I go to the RGB mixer and set each channel to 2, bringing colors in our image. And then I apply a built-in LUT to the second node. The LUT is called Blackmagic Broadcast Film to Extended Video Version 4. Yes, and this is how it works. Let's compare by making a compound node. I would say it is almost the same, but seems like the Color Transform plugin works a little bit nicer with the contrasting shadows and highlights. Maybe we can set a k-output parameter for our saturation node to 0.9 and lower the contrast in our adjustment node to achieve the same look. Like this. Ok, let's go and see another approach. I go to a color menu and reset all grades and nodes. Zoom a little bit. Raw settings will leave as it is. The first node will be our noise reduction node. This one will be adjustment node and LUT transfer node. I want to show you how you can work with built-in film look LUTs. But before doing this, we have to transform our Blackmagic Design color space and gamma into ARRI log C, because all these film LUTs are made for log C. I've made another useful LUT for you that transforms a Sigma FP footage interpreted as a Blackmagic Design color space to a kind of log C, because usually a footage from Alexa looks even flatter. But still, it works fine for our purposes. Let's create a false colors node. I turn it off for a moment. The next thing 
we have to do is to create another four nodes. The fourth one is going to be our film look LUT. We go to the film looks collection and choose this REC 709 codec 2383D60. Then I bring colors in our image as we did it before in the RGB mixer. Yes, let's adjust our exposure. I turn on the waveform. I will raise our shadows to 30 and then see what's happening with the skin tones. I will raise my highlights until I start seeing gray zones on the face. I will adjust the white balance using this tool and clicking on the eye. In two other nodes I will work with the sharpness to achieve a thin look. Here I will set a mid-tone detail to 25. And in this node I will raise the sharpness in the sharpen tab. Setting radius to 0.44 and scaling to 0.3. It's fine. Maybe a bit boring. Let's try and add a teal and orange LUT. This LUT we can try and see how it looks on a full screen. Because of adding sharpness we have a lot of chroma noise here. We can clean it by using a built-in noise reduction tool. Another good reason to buy a studio version of DaVinci. I will use the same settings as before. I think that I can raise shadows a bit more. Full screen? What I like about Sigma FP is that its lumen noise looks like a film grain. No fixed pattern noise. Maybe we can try another lot. This one gives a warm codec flavor. I think it's enough. You can do a lot of adjustments. Adjusting skin tones and using power windows. All these looks are just starting points for your creativity. It's just an overall idea of what we can do with the Sigma FP footage. So, if you like this tutorial, press the like button. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe. If you don't like, write me about my mistakes and what I can change to make my videos better. Thank you and see you in the next videos.